British tanks. Could it be the end of the road? Kim Jong Chol, what is South Korea's interest? The GMH board meeting. Why were the police called? Police were called into the headquarters of Global Motors, Britain's ailing car manufacturer, when a major row broke out at a shareholders' meeting. The argument is over the future direction of the company, but it also involves relations with the Far East and the future of Britain's defences. The disagreement is between GMH chairman Lady Harefield and a group of shareholders led by production director Dr. Ernest Campbell Smith. In Korea. Mr. Kim Jong Chol, president of GMH's Far Eastern partner, Seoul Engineering Enterprises, said that he would be re-examining his relations with the British group. And Parliament wanted to know how Global Motor Holdings Armoured Vehicle Division would be affected. This has many implications for Britain's armed forces, which are GMH's biggest military customers. <laughs> What's going on in the city of London may be good or it may be bad. Whichever it is, you can't fly away from it. There's no safe haven. Well, there's always the Bahamas or the Seychelles or the Cayman Islands, but they're still part of the same world. And this afternoon's league table on Financial Radio London shows the Italian lira back down to number four with Austrian shillings and Canadian dollars neck and neck in fifth place. In the equities market, New York brokers Crankite and Schimmel tried to stir things up with a test issue. Now there's a hot tip to chew over while you listen to Crazy Frank. Any move by any bank or stock exchange or dealing room anywhere spreads out far beyond the men and women who make a living from money. If the system booms, everybody wins. If it crashes, there isn't anybody who can safely ride out the storm. So welcome to my world, in which even the smallest ripple can grow into a tidal wave. Global Motor Holdings has two main divisions, domestic motors and armoured vehicles. This morning's meeting heard that GMH chairman, Lady Harefield, intends the group to give up volume car manufacture. Since last year, all the division's investment has been ploughed into developing advanced currency and share-dealing computer software. Lady Harefield claims that this will benefit shareholders. We take the view that our stockholders would wish us to divert our corporate energies away from our European manufacturing capacity. Old-fashioned smokestack industry with no future in today's high-technology world and concentrate on the financial services sector. The police were called after this morning's meeting was interrupted several times by representatives of 10,000 shareholding GMH employees who stand to lose their jobs. Their spokesman on the board, Sir Ernest Campbell-Smith, who broadcast a personal message to all shareholders, urging them to resist the new plan. A major company like ours has a duty to maintain its industrial production. Financial services are fundamentally speculative activities resulting in no real net gain. What is a bit disconcerting, to say the least, is the mad rush to embrace the new technology in order to gain real or perceived competitive advantages without proper regard for the possible consequences. At his Korean head office in Seoul, Mr. Kim Jong Chol has expressed concern about the proposed change in GMH's activities. The British government had encouraged him to take a 5% stake in GMH in return for a guaranteed quota of imported engine parts. Uh, the British connection is of course important to a motor car manufacturer, but I have no interest in getting involved with a British uh, financial company. Would he be selling off his holding in GMH? Uh, that a situation requires careful consideration. <laughs> Thank you. 
I don't claim that your world is bound to end up in financial crisis and confusion. All the uncountable number of ways things might work out. My world is just one of the possibles. If the scientists have got it right, then one future is just as true as another. This is a world in which information is the ultimate resource. And the most valuable is the kind of information we used to call money. Information about money is arguably more important than money itself. And in our business, it's the ability to understand information about money, which in turn enables us to make money for our shareholders. Once we thought coins and paper money meant something real, something more than just what was printed on them. Now we've learned that they're just shadows, symbols of something called value. And in the information age, computers and communication systems can deal with symbols quicker, cheaper and more securely than ever paper could. Money is electrons flowing through copper and silicon and gallium arsenide. Money is light pulsing down fibers of glass. Nothing changes hands. Money is a message. And you can send a message from anywhere. From the bank, from the street, from work, from home, even from the card in your pocket. This is your ticket to a world of buying and selling. And quick profit if you read the market right. It's a world where everything has its price. But it is a price that can change by the minute. This is your ticket to the biggest game in history. The Global Casino. The Global Casino consists of a whole host of financial networks, that's what they're called. That is to dignify them with something which you think had taken a lot of work. It hasn't. What has occurred is that we've taken the global telecommunication system and we've created some software and we've done a lot of work on the procedures and processes that financial institutions follow and bank heads together and they can now trade amongst themselves across the planet. Wherever you are, whatever the time, you can find a market to play, a game to join. And all you need is a computer, a telephone line, and a link to the trading network. Okay, so, uh, can I give you two million pounds at uh, 145.17? Good, that's fine. Uh, Use the instructions. We have suddenly found that if we can trade across the planet, everyone can get richer faster. Or at least the people who deal can get richer faster. And seeing as the people in that business want to get richer faster anyway, and it doesn't matter whether they're English, Japanese, Americans, Russians. What we're busy creating out there is what I call the global casino. Today, the integrity of credit is being chipped away by a financial revolution that is contributing to the lowering of credit standards and muting the responsibility of creditors and debtors. A surprising new development in the global motor holdings boardroom battle. The Shanghai Stock Exchange has reported a sale of 10 million GMH shares. This has sent their value sliding. Dealers in London believe that Mr. Kim Jong Chol of Seoul Engineering may have sold his 5% holding in the company. But would Mr. Kim confirm the rumor? It is incorrect to say that I have sold my share in Global Motors without consult my good friend, Lady Hoffman. Stock analysts are surprised at such a large-scale sellout. What are the effects likely to be? Price volatility. Nobody knows who's sold, nobody knows who's bought. It's also, the stock is a constituent of the indices in both Tokyo, London, Sydney and Hong Kong. And any movement in GMH's share price will bring those indices down, which will mean that both Tokyo, Hong Kong and London will move down. And we're worried. The sun never sets on the world's financial networks, 
Just as it's going down in Tokyo, it's coming up in London. And New York is waking up now as the city drifts back from lunch. Any happening, anywhere, which affects the market is common knowledge around the world in less than 80 seconds. Considered at every company headquarters, registered at each regional office, sent down the line to directly affect every individual consumer. Drive into a service station and you've joined the world's oil market. The price on the pumps is different now from an hour ago. 60 minutes, it may be different again. Depends on current sales and stocks and the price of oil on the international spot market. Fill up now or wait till later. Could be cheaper, could be dearer. That's a gamble you can't avoid. In 10,000 places between New York, Tokyo and London, in the Middle East, in China, and in South America, in the far north and the deep south, wherever there is a telephone, a data cable or a satellite in the sky, the news feeds market makers and dealers in negotiable commodities, dealers in minerals and money, bonds, options, energy, foodstuffs. Even the corner supermarket deals in futures now. Breakfast? The cost might depend on this morning's grain prices in Chicago and the price of next year's harvest and the year after as well as what the dollar's worth on the exchanges and its future value at the time when next year's crop is sold. Excuse me, sir. I see you have a packet of coffee there. You uh, drink a lot of coffee, do you, sir? Mm. Some. And I suppose you're a bit worried about the constant change of the price of coffee. I know I am. Never know how much it's going to cost from one day to the next, do you? Nope. So I wondered if you thought about protecting yourself against wild price changes in the future. Now, how would I do that? Let me tell you about our very special coffee promotions offer. Go ahead. This voucher costs no more than one extra penny on today's price. It buys you a packet of coffee, giant size, on the first Monday of next month. Now, you clearly have a discriminating taste in coffee, sir. <laughs> Why not take one? How about if it's cheaper next month? Well, of course, that's the risk you take. So you see the way that coffee prices are going, strictly between you and me and the Hungarian salami, the chances of it falling are about as high as an orgy in a nunnery. I think I'll pass on this one, thank you. A rush of selling orders by GMH shareholders have just sent prices tumbling in the industrial sector of the market. Automatic programme trading machines triggered at the 100 pence level and Global Motor Holdings has slid 60 points since the last bulletin. The investors report to top 100 indexes now showing a major reversal as hot money in New York and Tokyo moves out of stocks into the financial bond arena. I don't know about you, but I'm following suit. This is madness. <laughs> I, I think in terms of the man in the street, information technology has a, a very direct effect, and that's to bring um, closer to home an understanding of price fluctuations and markets in the sense that um, there is immediate information available at uh, little or no cost. In fact, arguably at uh, less cost than there was before. That is a, an immediate effect of information technology. But the really big tables in the global casino are hidden away in secure bunkers, safe from sabotage and infiltration. In this ultimate game of poker, what better poker face could you have than a display screen? There is a limit to the speed with which the human brain, let alone the human eye, can actually absorb information. We are now seeing already what we call automatic execution of trades. That is to say, 
A machine, in simple terms, is talking to another machine and is identifying very, very small mismatches in the market and therefore executing transactions, obviously within credit constraints. Clearly, we must not forget basic control disciplines. But nonetheless, it still requires the intelligence of the human being to make the decision when some sort of political event happens, which clearly, with the best will in the world, we cannot anticipate and therefore cannot program into any computer system. If you win in this game, you win from a total stranger. If you lose, you'll never know who made a profit from your mistake. Look round this room. In fact, it's not really the same size of room as we were used to 40, 50 years ago. Which has many different functions. If you look at it now, there's about five or six people. And they're not actually dealing, if you look at them. What they're actually doing is they're looking at information coming in and they're making decisions on it. But the decisions they're making are not on individual deals. They're on the, the class of deal that, that needs to be made and what they expect is going to happen. All the dealing itself, all the main part of the dealing, is being done by machines which we don't actually see. And what they're actually doing is they're dealing with other machines in similar rooms to this. One or two places in the world, small places, and in some firms that don't do a lot of dealing, say corporates, small corporates, there are humans. And some of those machines are talking to humans at this time. In the old days, bargains were struck with a handshake, face to face. Then they picked up a telephone to clinch a deal. Now, machines do it all. I could say it never goes wrong, and you wouldn't believe me. What I will say is our systems never go wrong because everything is backed up. Because it is in all our interests, not only as principal traders, but as you and I, as members of the public, to ensure the ongoing viability and integrity of the world's financial services. All right, so a deal goes through six countries. It begins in Latin America, goes through Switzerland, somebody does another deal in Panama, goes up to the Grand Caymans, into the United States, across to Japan, back to Canada, down to Panama again. That's taken you three seconds. In the middle of that, somebody reneged on the whole deal, and a hundred million disappeared somewhere. Whose law's responsible? The communications room, where all the deals, trades and exchanges pass through on their way between this building and the rest of the world. It's about as hard to get in here as Fort Knox. But it could be worth more to you if you managed it. With the right tools for the job, you can listen in to every word. What you over here could make you rich. And it's safer than robbing a bank with a sawn-off shot. And who better to advise a bank on its security than someone from the other side of the fence? Well, the first rule to remember, and the only one, is to keep your ideas simple and let the technology do the work. The trick is to get out of the city to the countryside. That's where the weak link is. We've got it all sewn up in the city now. But out in the countryside, where those cables go along railway lines, down those cables, there's about 2,000 telephone calls going on at the same time. All you need then is the equipment that splits up those telephone calls and your computer's programmed to listen in for keywords. When those keywords appear, you're on the screen, you know what's coming on the screen, the transcript appears, I know who's interested in what sort of information. I can then reroute that same information into those cables again and straight out to the people I know will pay me the money for it. The criminal no longer has to be at the site of the crime. Theoretically, if he has access to a telephone in Outer Mongolia, he can instantaneously commit a computer crime in Toronto. The markets were still reeling this afternoon from the effects of Global Motor Holdings' share price slide. London trading of stocks and bonds has been badly hit as the index reached a new low. Great Northern Bank is one of GMH's major stockholders. Do they have cause for concern? No, there's no reason for concern even in the short term. You must understand that Great Northern Bank's holdings are widely securitized. What, is, what does that actually mean? It means that their holdings are spread across many industries in many countries. And therefore, the collapse of just one company's share price can have no overall effect upon the general quality of the bank's holdings. 
but smaller dealers are being seriously affected too. Could automated machine dealing be responsible for the downward spiral? Dealers very often use trading systems on their computers. These work using share price levels. When a level is reached, a buy order or sell order is generated. What we're seeing now is very many sell orders being generated in the case of GMH. It's fallen from 125 to 100. At 100 level, sell orders were generated, shares went onto the market. As shares went onto the market, the price fell. Other orders were generated. They were sell orders. As these were generated, the shares fell even further. And what we're seeing is a general spiraling downwards of a price. There are great dangers in the speed at which money is moving through these networks because you can get great volatilities. I don't say this is a recipe for chaos or a recipe for disaster. I just say to you this is a recipe for something and that something is different to what we have now. Information technology has brought the small players into the game. If you don't mind sitting up half the night, you might just possibly hit on a trend a margin that nobody else has spotted, and make a killing. It's like finding gold in California in 1849. It doesn't happen often, but it happens just often enough. The London financial world was astounded today by the news that this week's dramatic fall in share and bond values may have been started by accident. What? what? Mr. Robert McKendrick, who deals from his home in Lewisham, wanted to sell his thousand shares in Global Motor Holdings to buy his wife a new coat. Well, I, I just started putting the order into the terminal and, and then Susan, that's my wife, she called out because the electric iron was sparking. So I got up to see what the problem was and there was this terrific bang. It seems that the electrical disturbance added four more zeros to the sale offer and sent it to the Shanghai Stock Exchange. Mr. McKendrick now has to find the extra 9,999,000 shares he didn't have. As a private investor, how can he obtain them? Mr. McKendrick unwittingly has shorted the market, which means that he's sold shares that he doesn't own. And the only way that he can get out of that predicament is to go back into the market and buy those shares. He sold at 125p, the shares are now standing at 25p, so he should make roughly 10 million pounds. If you have pounds, pay to shed them now. The Bank of England and the German Bundesbank have stepped into the sterling market with large orders to buy. We'll have to wait and see if this will affect the settings of the automatic trading computer responsible for this afternoon's run on the pound. Just for you, okay. I really want to sell five million of my own stock, Global Motor Holding, and I want it sold immediately. Five million? That's, That's quite right. a big holding, sir. It is indeed. But, but I'm prepared to take absolutely anything you've got. Deutschmark, rubles, yen, anything. Okay, sir, no problem. The global casino is a very fragile place. It's too big, too fast, and too complicated for any single person to have the whole picture in mind. So we leave it to the computers put our faith in technology and hold our breath. Right, five million is rather a large holding. Um, I don't know what the market will do. Well, look, I fully appreciate that, but I really am anxious. So supposing we thought about handling half a million or a quarter of a million straight away. You've got a terrible loss, haven't you? Well, I've got a very great deal of it. I've been with it for 40 years. It's a long time. I think there'll be government intervention, personally. I don't think that it is politically acceptable um, for particularly the foreign exchange markets to carry on operating as they are, that this is detrimental. I think one of the prerequisites to have free and open um, trade and transference of goods is a measure of financial predictability. And currently, this is already an unattainable goal. Scenes reminiscent of the share flotations of the 1980s have followed the announcement of the collapse of Great Northern Bank this afternoon. As worried account holders formed queues outside Britain's high street banks, a spokesman said that the last time they had to close their doors against the public, it was because of the overwhelming numbers anxious to deposit money and buy shares. This time, he said, 
the situation was exactly the opposite. In a time like the present of vigorous innovation, not all of it understood, occasional accidents and failures are a necessary part of the process by which the market learns. I think one of the questions that people ask themselves is how is the genie going to be stuffed back into the lamp? Um, this is possibly the most difficult question to answer of all. Um, it is possible that the, the system in a, in a speculative frenzy will overreach itself, although one, one should not necessarily choose that as the most obvious denouement of the situation that we're in now. What money does is redistribute the wealth that exists in the world. It doesn't actually make money itself. It's only production that makes money. Making things, building houses, making cars, uh, producing washing machines, making computers, if you like. But it's only production that makes things. Money doesn't make things. And the problem is to devise a financial system which facilitates production, particularly production that takes time, and not one which inhibits or indeed penalizes long-term production. The problem about the financial liberalization today is that all that flexibility in money markets, all that emphasis on money making money, is penalizing long-term production. I promised you at the beginning that my world wasn't your future. That there were an uncountable number of different directions yours could go. It all depends on the choices you make. My global casino is the result of making one kind of choice. Of believing in illusions. Everlasting, constant growth, never-ending profits. I lend to you, you lend to him, he lends to her, and she lends to me. So nothing actually changes hands. And somehow we all make a profit. The continuous flows of money, whereby individuals are lending to each other and skimming a little bit off the top and everybody seems to get richer all the time, that can only be sustained if real output is growing and everybody is gaining a particular share of that real output. If output doesn't increase, then ultimately the financial merry-go-round uh, breaks down and there is no one to pay the piper. There's no one to call the tune. And in that case, the whole house of cards can collapse very rapidly indeed. 